Uh, hello, dear colleagues. Uh, I will show my screen. So this presentation is the result of uh, the collective work, a, a brief uh, overview of a collective work of four expert groups, UNDP, Belarus Accelerates Lab, uh, Memicro Macro Center for, uh, of Belarusian State Economic University, UNDP Belarus, uh, Behavioral Insights Group, and uh, Minsk Regional Institute for Development of Education. And on this slide, you can see uh, the team leaders and their contact details. On our uh, learning journey of the gender gap in STEM, we raised the question of when it initially appears. The results of the study of national statistics showed that in college, 66% of boys uh, choose STEM specialties for further education and only 26% of girls do the same. At the university, 41% of boys choose specializations there uh, and only 21% of girls. Uh, this not only shows the scale of the problem of gender disbalance on STEM, STEM in Belarus, but also indicates that this problem already exists when choosing uh, education after school. So the turning point uh, where the reasons for the gender gap in STEM are formed is the period of making decision about choosing a specialty for further education. Uh, regardless of which path a girl is choosing, uh, go to college or go to university, uh, girls make the decision about choosing a further specialty at the age of 13 to 16. Focus groups and in-depth interviews showed that girls make this decision under the influence of a large number of factors, which needs a deeper exploring. But as of now, two most recurring are access to STEM infrastructure, uh, which is formed under uh, urban-rural uh, difference, and uh, parents' influence, which is formed under gender stereotypes and gender balance uh, or imbalance in uh, uh, possible learning groups where a girl uh, will be learning. Uh, as a, uh, one of the uh, possible uh, interventions or uh, pilot projects that can tackle the problem of uh, uh, uneven access to uh, uh, special means of education, uh, Minsk Regional Institute for the Development of Education jointly with High Tech Park is developing a mobile STEM class. So the equipment is transported to the regional school and uh, during the session, uh, a supervisor uh, tries to find uh, which kind of topics can be uh, uh, studied there with, with children. And after that, uh, on this topic, uh, there are three days and three trainings, uh, after which uh, a rural teacher provides uh, education for rural girls, uh, girls and boys using uh, the transported equipment. And uh, this initiative uh, is already deployed in 17 uh, schools of nine districts of Minsk region since uh, 2017. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, this initiative showed that uh, the interest from uh, parents of, uh, of girls and the girls themselves is not too high. And that's why the UNDP in support of this uh, initiative uh, tries to uh, find uh, an, an, an answer how to uh, increase girls' participation in STEM. Uh, Center Mimic or Macro uh, have compiled a survey and we are now in the designing and intervention stage and we have uh, a certain uh, intermediate results. So the intermediate results uh, of the survey shows that uh, Two main reasons why girls uh, don't choose STEM is the difficulties uh, uh, that lack of interest in this field and the complexity of the required technical knowledge. Uh, initially, uh, it was assumed that self-distrust is, is the most important factor, uh, but the results of the survey shows that uh, there are two more uh, important factors. As soon as uh, these uh, factors is uh, influencing on girls uh, since childhood, we can see that uh, combination of this factor can also uh, pops out uh, during the uh, choosing STEM career uh, for women on the labor market. And with this, I would like to pass the floor to my colleague, uh, Margarita Zmachinska. Thank you. Uh, 
Thank you, Greta. Uh, dear participants, it's a pleasure to speak to you today. Uh, my name is Margarita Zmachinska. I'm a thematic coordinator on human development and gender equality. I will speak today about the project that UNDP launched in Belarus to explore behavioral insights as a tool to nudge women uh, to break barriers installed by gender stereotypes and social norms and increase their participation in the economy, including in STEM sector. As we know, gender stereotypes ingrained from a young age could reduce the likelihood that women apply to jobs in STEM. And even if women do apply, gender stereotypes negatively affect their performance during the recruitment process and at work. Sense of belonging is really important. Uh, during the recruitment process, candidates assess how likely it is that they will fit in the organization. And if they think that they are likely to be isolated as a woman in the man-dominated technical sector in Belarus, this can impact their likelihood of seeking to progress in visible workplaces. Women may also underperform at work or during recruitment processes for STEM jobs because they face what is called the stereotype threat. It occurs when someone is reminded of negative stereotypes about their group. For example, when women are reminded of the stereotypes that they are bad at math and are not suited for technical roles. When this negative stereotype is highlighted, people become anxious about fulfilling this negative stereotype, and this can impair their performance. So we devised four behavioral solutions that can help women to overcome these barriers. Letters from identifiable role models might increase the sense of belonging and encourage young women to apply to technical roles. For instance, women working or studying in STEM sector might send letters to young women of skill age in Belarus who are deciding what subjects or degrees to pursue. One way to counter a stereotype threat is to ask people to think about and express what they value. This is called the value affirmation. Value affirmation exercises are successful because asking people to reaffirm their values increases their sense of self-worth which in turn could help to protect them from this stereotype threat. Another solution is to build on existing programs. Uh, in Belarus, various NGOs and tech companies run programs to support the development of technical skills. And these programs are promising touch points through which to encourage women to engage in STEM subjects. Next slide, please. At the second stage of the project, UNDP in Belarus worked together with the Behavioral Insights team and the IT company Inform Systems to increase the representation of women in technical training courses as an open educational platform. We conducted two behavioral trials. As you can see on the slide, we uh, worked with women with existing technical skills to encourage them to continue learning. And we worked with women without any technical skills to encourage them to start studies. We delivered messages to them, reaffirming their skills, highlighting flexibility of courses, and highlighting that beginner online courses are suitable for people with no prior technical knowledge. Key findings from the trial was that the most successful behavioral intervention was in affirming women's existing skills, personalizing messages to their skill level, and providing feedback about individual abilities. This intervention increased the chance that women will show interest in a technical course by more than 12%. This approach can be of course scaled up. For example, targeting high performing women in technical university courses with personalized invitations to apply to roles in the STEM sector. Uh, overall, this project has shown the potential that the behavioral insights can offer to reduce gender gap in STEM in Belarus and the opportunities to scale these results beyond. Thank you.